my dear students a hearty welcome to new module of bio world in the previous class we have discussed about certain endocrine glands today we are going to discuss about the remaining two endocrine gland which play a key role in controlling the other glands too they are pituitary gland and hypothalamus the pituitary gland is located at the base of the brain just below the hypothalamus to which it is attached through nerve fibers it is the part of the endocrine system and produces critical hormones which are chemical substances that control various body functions the gland has two parts anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary the anterior lobe of pituitary gland produces a set of hormones which regulate the functions of other endocrine glands these are tropic hormones hence the pituitary gland has great significance in endocrine system so here you can see the two major divisions anterior and posterior pituitary anterior pituitary produce a set of hormones called tropic hormone along with some other hormones posterior they do not produce any hormone but act as a storehouse of hormones produced by hypothalamus the anterior pituitary produces tropic hormones such as thyroid stimulating hormone thyroid stimulating hormone tsh adreno cortico tropic hormone adreno cortico tropic hormone acth and gonado tropic hormone gth which is of basically of two types lh and fsh they are commonly known as gonado tropic hormone gth and growth hormone it is also known as somatotropic hormone sth and prolactin so tropic hormones are tsh acth gonadotropic hormone or gth then growth hormone gh or sth somatotropic hormone in addition to this tropic hormone there is one more hormone secreted by anterior pituitary that is prolactin coming to posterior pituitary as i said earlier it they won't produce any hormone but they act as a storehouse of certain hormones produced by hypothalamus they are oxytocin and vasopressin so anterior pituitary produce tropic hormones such as tsh acth gth gh and prolactin whereas posterior pituitary act as a storehouse of oxytocin and vasopressin so this is a simple illustration showing how the pituitary gland is connected with various parts of our body so as we have discussed earlier the anterior produces tsh which get connected with thyroid gland then the second hormone produced by anterior pituitary is acth which has a connection with adrenal cortex that means the gland is adrenal gland and to which part it is connected cortex of adrenal gland 
Next one is GH. GH is also known as STH. That is the growth hormone which is connected to various body parts like bones, muscles, etc. So, the growth of bones, muscles, etc. is under the control of growth hormone. Next one is GTH, gonadotropins, which has connection with reproductive glands such as testis and ovary. One more gland or hormone related to the anterior pituitary which is shown in this figure is MSH. MSH means melanocyte stimulating hormone. Melanin is a pigment which gives color to hair and skin and also in eyes too we have studied when we discussed about iris do you remember so msh is acting on skin but it is not given in our textbook so let's focus on the various hormones which is given in the textbook that is tsh gh acth and gonadotropins and the next hormone which is related to anterior pituitary is prolactin which is not a tropic hormone which has an influence on mammary gland which produce milk. Posterior pituitary they don't produce any hormones at all but they act as a storehouse of oxytocin and vasopressin vasopressin is also known as adh which is stored in posterior part of a pituitary gland oxytocin has a control over the mammary glands that is in the breast during the time of uh, lactation and adh act on kidneys so this is a simple illustration showing how the pituitary gland influence various glands and parts of our body. So let's see the function of various hormones produced by pituitary gland. First of all thyroid stimulating hormone. It stimulates the activity of the thyroid gland. Next one adrenocorticotropic hormone ACTH adrenocorticotropic hormone which stimulates the activity of adrenal cortex. Next one is gonadotropic hormone GTH stimulates the activity of testis in males and ovaries in females. The next hormone produced by anterior pituitary which comes under the category of tropic hormone is growth hormone GH which is also known as somatotropic hormone STH. It promotes the growth of the body. Next one is prolactin. Prolactin helps in the production of milk. Students, now let's see some disorders related to pituitary gland. First of all, dwarfism. It is due to the deficiency of growth hormone during the growing period. So, obviously, it results in standard growth. There won't be definite growth if the growth hormone lacks. Next one is gigantism. That is the reverse of the condition of the uh, dwarfism during the growing stage if the growth hormone is excess that will result in gigantism here you can see the difference between the dwarfism and gigantism very clearly the next disorder related to the growth hormone is acromegaly if the growth hormone exceed its limit after the adult wood that means after completing the growing stage, then it will result in elongation of the facial bones, extremities, that is the tip of fingers, which result in a hideous look. Hideous means somewhat abnormal look, not a normal face of a 
a person it will be elongated as you see here so acromegaly is the condition which is resulted as a result of excess growth hormone after adulthood so let's move to the last endocrine gland that is hypothalamus here you can see the location of hypothalamus it is the prime controller of endocrine system it controls pituitary gland and thereby the entire endocrine system it produces a variety of hormones which have a control over the entire endocrine system now let's see the hormones and functions produced by hypothalamus it produces four important hormones let's see one by one first of all releasing hormone it stimulates anterior lobe of pituitary gland and secretes tropic hormone so from the name itself we can guess releasing hormone it stimulates the secretion of other glands with the help of pituitary second one inhibitory hormone inhibition means to stop stop the secretion so it inhibits the production of tropic hormones in the anterior lobe of pituitary gland so just the reverse of releasing so releasing helps to stimulate the secretion whereas inhibitory inhibits or help to stop the production of hormones of various glands next one oxytocin oxytocin is generally seen in female uh, which helps or facilitates lactation so lactation means breastfeeding in addition to lactation oxytocin play a prominent role in childbirth by stimulating the contraction of smooth muscles in uterus so sometimes this oxytocin is provided Uh, during the delivery or during the labor time in order to facilitate childbirth some uh, in some cases the production of oxytocin will be very limited which causes certain uh, difficulties in normal birth so at that time an injection or in the form of a tablet or pellet it is provided to the uh, person in order to facilitate a smooth or a normal childbirth so what is the function of oxytocin it facilitates lactation facilitates means helps in lactation lactation means breast feeding in the previous gland in pituitary we have discussed about prolactin do you remember prolactin helps in production of milk from mammary gland who helps in ejection ejection means secreting out so only production is related with prolactin ejection or lactation or secretion is with help of oxytocin so oxytocin two important functions facilitates lactation and it also helps in childbirth how is it possible by the contraction of smooth muscles in uterus it actually push the baby to outward and by thereby helping in normal delivery next one is vasopressin it is also known as anti diuretic hormone diuresis means urine formation and anti diuretic means not helping in urine that means from urine the water is reabsorbed back with the help of this hormone so let's move to the function vasopressin helps in reabsorption of water in kidney so now let's see how is it possible we can imagine two conditions summer and a rainy season here you can see the variation of vasopressin depending on various season during summer season what happens to our body our body sweats more or sweating increases so majority of body water will be lost in the form of sweat 
as a result production of adh increases reabsorption of water in kidney also increases thus the amount of urine will be less so these all these happens during which season summer season so summer season the sun is will be very hot and the atmosphere will be very arid and dry so that the water will be absorbed in the form of uh, sweat it will be lost in the form of sweat as a result adh will be stimulated and it increases reabsorption of water in the blood and it result in less amount of urine then what happens during rainy season or cold climatic condition sweating decreases so production of adh also decreases as a result reabsorption of water in kidney decreases what happened to urine the amount of urine will be high that's why we have a temptation to pass the urine frequently during rainy season why is it so because sweating is very less so majority of the water will be lost in the form of urine itself so during summer season water loss will be in the form of sweating but during rainy or cold climatic condition it will be in the form of urine itself so which is the hormone uh, which play a key role in maintaining the water level in blood that is adh or vasopressin this is a simple concept map which shows the maintenance of level of water in blood so you have to focus from the middle onwards normal level of water in blood what happens if the water level increases it causes decrease in production of vasopressin as a result decrease in reabsorption of water in kidney which result in high quantity of urine or raises the quantity of urine then what is the second situation if water level decreases it stimulates the production of vasopressin that means vasopressin increases as a result reabsorption of water in kidney increases what happens it result in low quantity of urine so when you study the relation you have to study in this format where you have to begin normal level of water in blood water should be uh, in a normal level in blood which helps in circulation and maintaining homeostasis if water is less or more that will affects the circulatory system circulatory system has a crucial role in maintaining homeostasis why because it is going to it is going to connect various system together blood as you know it is not only the carrier of oxygen and carbon dioxide apart from that they carry lot of nutrients uh, minerals ions so the chemical property should be maintained in a normal way and who helps in to do though that is water so water level should be maintained in a normal way and how is it possible with the help of vasopressin and according to the temperature outside the water level is adjusted in such a way that it always try to keep the level in a normal way i hope it is clear for you so vasopressin is a hormone which play a key role in maintaining water level in our body Let's see a disease related to vasopressin or ADH. It is known as diabetes insipidus. It is due to the deficiency of vasopressin or the ADH. The symptoms include frequent urination, excess water loss through urine, and increased thirst. So two types of diabetes are there: diabetes mellitus and insipidus. Mellitus is related to insulin deficiency whereas insipidus is related to the adh deficiency so excess water will be lost in through the urine that is the main symptom so frequent urination and it will result in increase thirst 
Now let's see how the hypothalamus is connected to pituitary gland. So hypothalamus connects to the anterior pituitary through a portal blood system. That means through veins, a particular system. Whereas the posterior connected through neuronal connection, that through nerves. So anterior is connected with blood vessel, which is known as portal system, whereas the posterior is connected with the help of neural cells. To understand it clearly, we can focus on this illustration. It is the connection of hypothalamus and pituitary. So here you can see the neurosecretory cells are connected to the posterior part of pituitary whereas the anterior part is connected to hypothalamus with the help of blood vessels. It is known as portal system. So I repeat, hypothalamus and pituitary are connected by means of two system. Anterior pituitary is connected to hypothalamus with the help of portal blood system that means through blood vessels whereas posterior pituitary is connected to hypothalamus with the help of neural cells or simply we can say neurons. So what happens when oxytocin and vasopressin is secreted by hypothalamus with the help of neuron cells they are transported to posterior part and stored there and what happens to the anterior part they are connected to blood vessels so that the releasing hormone and inhibitory hormone can release their secretion through blood vessels so that they can reach the pituitary gland so anterior and posterior pituitary is connected separately with hypothalamus anterior connected with portal system whereas posterior is connected with the neural cells. I hope that part is clear. So with that we come to the end of endocrine system. So here you can see the glands at a glance. The prime controller of endocrine system is hypothalamus. The assistant is pituitary gland. Next to the pituitary, we can see pineal. Then coming to the downward or next part of our body, that is thyroid and parathyroid. Below that, there is a small gland in the chest region, thymus. Then adrenal gland, pancreas, testis and ovary. So these are the major endocrine glands which help to maintain the homeostasis in our body. So children, here I am concluding. Thank you.